The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. Let's take a look at what we've got going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little too early here. We don't open until 9.30, so anything we're looking at, you know, we're just we're waiting for the market to open. Uh, let's take a look at General Mills. We'll talk about them in a second. Uh, the E-mini is off about 0.31%. Those Russell Futures off about 065 The NQs as well down about 0.32% on the open, excuse me, before the open. And the Dow Futures, 0.25%. The gold contract, we've been seeing a minor pullback. Um, of course, we had a pretty historic run up, and this is kind of to be expected with it. We're also seeing um, pretty high dollar as well. Trying to get back to that 107 area, it is in the upper trading range. <clears throat> approaching 106 and it uh it looks like it just wants that level it is moving consistently up towards it still dynamics off about 123 Let me take a look at that at least on a year to date and yeah so we're getting back to uh, man maybe we test about like the 110 level that's pretty nuts for still dynamics uh again the dollar that 105 96 right now um of course, the high on the year-to-date is 106.51, so it wants, looks like it wants to get to that 107 level. Of course, that would bring uh, some selling pressures in the uh, metal markets in particular. And then Disney just getting destroyed again, uh, doing nothing at this low level. Now, we are up a little bit at 102.15, uh, but just doing absolutely nothing. It'll be interesting to see how Iger's new uh, kind of path forward for, for movies will do for Disney. Um, I think they're adding a new park as well, which will be interesting and a lot of kind of cash inflow into that. Uh, and so hopefully it pays off. But as it stands now, uh, should have sold at 123. That's stock, man. Let's take a look at General Mills. And, you know, so they're off about 6.5%. Their, their forecasts were below estimates. And... It's a little bit poetic in some sense, because when <laughs> the information came out that Americans were struggling uh, to, to pay for food at the grocery store, General Mills said, well, you could just eat cereal, um, which I think is a little bit insensitive to say, I suppose. I don't know. They're off about 6.5%. Uh, Let's talk about it here. Uh, the forecast annual profit below estimates on Wednesday and posted a bigger than expected drop in quarterly sales hurt by lower demand for its snack bars and pet food. So the thing with pets is nuts, right? I mean, General Mills, this is kind of like wartime food in a sense, like very high processed cereals. And um, as people get more attached to their pets, which is, uh, you know, I mean, that's the prevailing kind of cultural sentiment, right? That pets are really part of the family. They're not just animals. You know, we keep them inside. They sleep in our beds. Uh, we want to feed them good food. There has been a surge, essentially, of really high-quality uh, pet food. And, and what I mean by that, I mean, it's it's raw, actual meat. You know, you have to freeze this stuff. Um, it's, it's highly perishable. And it's getting away from this kind of uh, kibble era that we've been experiencing, you know, really since World War II, right? I mean, prior to that, you know, animals were not eating kibble, at least dogs. Um, and... Uh, you know, with the strains of the war, uh, they, they, they started trying to push uh, this highly processed, kind of like grain-based uh, food for dogs. And that has been persistent. And I think that's changing around. And the advertisements uh, for those companies that sell this, you know, raw, natural dog food are amazing. You know, I, I mean, it's like you, you'd think they were like forced laborers, the dogs in these, these ads. Um, and I would, I would reckon that that is cutting in a little bit. I would also say that more uh, higher quality cereal-based um, foods are popular as well. Uh, it, but, you know, if you're questioning whether or not people really care that much at dogs, look at how much vets cost. Uh, people are spending and shelling out 
tons of money. Uh, the, the high vet costs can sustain that level because people are willing to spend that kind of money on pets. Um, it's really interesting. This actually does have a historic precedent as well, if you're interested, you know, riffing until the market open. Uh, but this is, this is very similar to how uh, Romans in the imperial era acted as well. You can see some really interesting gravestones um, for pets. And uh, yeah, anyways, kind of interesting. Let's talk about the company also expects annual dollar value growth in its business to be below its long-term projections, uh, pushing its shares down by about 4% before the bell. Uh, the company has struggled with lower volumes and retailers cutting down on inventory while facing ongoing competition from lower priced private labels that have been eating into its market share. I would say that's prominent as well. I don't know a lot of people who eat cereal like this uh, for breakfast at all. Uh, and if they are, they're eating these actually like <laughs> there's something called magic spoon. I don't think a lot of people eat this, but it just goes to show you how, again, what they're saying, these kind of like specialties or like private labels. Um, but if I, if I know anyone in my age group or even a little bit older that, that eat cereal for breakfast, which is like, I can't think of many, uh, it's either very healthy food, right, or, or projected that way, or it's these things like Magic Spoon or high-protein uh, cereals that people are eating. We're eating more protein than anyone on planet Earth right now in, in my age group and the uh, generation above uh, the millennials. So Kellogg, Kraft Heinz also reported pressured val uh, volumes. And Campbell's Soup uh, had an upbeat quarter. It's kind of fascinating. The company is also pressured by higher input costs, such as sugar and labor, <clears throat> as well as supply chain disruptions, which we can talk about as well, uh, how some of the people who are managing the supply chains through the Red Sea are, you know, obviously the Houthi rebels are out there, um, and, and, and they're closing down, or at least posing a massive threat uh, to the freighting through there. And uh, we all know, at least in some capacity, that the inflation that we are experiencing now had to do with supply chain uh complications during covid there's a lot more to that as well but you know that was a major thing uh and this is one of the things i've been arguing that's a problem right because the fed can only deal with demand side <clears throat> when a lot of the issue initially uh was supply side and it looks like we might uh, be having that coming in again uh, which would, would definitely throw a wrench in any kind of progress forward in inflation general mills expects a full year adjusted profit to be i mean this is pretty crazy uh up or down on either side, 1%, uh, compared to the analyst estimates of a 3.7% rise, which is, I mean, that warrants a 6.3%, 6.4% really at this point uh, drop as well. The company also noted that it continues to feel the impact of an uncertain macroeconomic environment affecting consumers in its core market. Huh. The company's quarterly net sales fell to $4.71 billion and $5.03 billion a year, a year ago. You know, I'll say to, <clears throat> yeah, and I speak mainly from, you know, my generation and, and maybe some of the younger millennials uh, as well. But what I see all the time, and I, I see it, they're marketing it to us at different restaurants or marketing to us on social media, but we don't eat cereals. Like, we just don't. Uh, we see them as bad overall. Uh, as not really cheap, I mean, cereal is not like a cheaper alternative in any major way. You know, we eat eggs, we eat high protein stuff, or we don't eat breakfast at all. And we wait until later in the day uh, to eat a larger lunch or dinner. Um, kind of fascinating stuff. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the market, <laughs> the morning market kickoff. Uh, I'm looking at NVIDIA. He had, obviously, a pretty big sell-off in some capacity, right? Going up from 140.76 all the way down to what the heck was that? About 117-something? One, uh, just under 118. We are still at a $3 trillion market cap, okay? Nuts. It's nuts. That's six times what the, the, the global chip market was last year. So my big argument of things that are going on in this economy is I still think there's a lot of money in it, okay? The idea of high interest rates, you know, making this kind of like a gold sink in a way, or money sink, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure is hitting some strata of the economy, but probably not the strata that has the most liquidity, um, which I think in itself will pose some problems going forward in a way. Um, obviously, high interest rates can also worsen that situation going forward or groups or people or entities with high amounts of liquidity can still make some pretty good money right now, even with high interest rates, even if it's not being actively played within the market. But regardless, look, I mean, we're at three trillion right now with NVIDIA. Um, you know, that's going to require, a f honestly, a few years probably of like sustained uh, positive movement, right, to price in. Now, this is super interesting. Okay, This is from Guggenheim, all right? One of their head analysts was looking at spending in corporate IT. All right, and they're saying they are not seeing any increased spending for AI, and they're not seeing any decrease in spending now in order to spend it later for AI either. Um, we've even seen, now this has changed in recent times, but we've seen even IT and, and large companies uh, pull back on investments in uh, IT that's not really... Uh, you know, network related or, uh, you know, 
it, there's no spending outside of just improving the network, uh, just in function uh, functionality, right? So I talk a lot about uh, cybersecurity and network security, right? And some of the spending had been reeled back in recent months, and that's changed a little bit uh, going forward. But we're talking about essentially no increased spending, anything coming out of corporate IT. And uh, as I said, you know, no saving for spending in the future. And I think that's kind of telling. I will also say, too, let's take a look at what we have for AI right now and how that applies to anything in, in business right now. So ChatGPT is cool. It's great. The, the, the new 4.0 is very nice. It does some cool things. Same with all of Claude. I mean, but what is, how is it helping me in, in business in any major way beyond me asking questions to maybe you know, write something or uh, has, I, do it, I have it do quick calculations on something so I don't have to sit there and, and write everything out, right? That's the big question. Where, where is the applicability currently uh, for large language models in businesses? And, and I don't see where that is. And again, I, I, would, I would reckon as well that any good large corporate IT team would not allow people to put corporate information into chat GPT. Uh, I don't think that's very smart. I mean, you're sending sensitive data into a server somewhere, right? I think going forward as well, we're going to have a massive problem with data centers consuming too much energy and the horizon for creating, uh, you know, local nuclear power, which is 100% what these data servers are going to do, uh, that, that's, that's far off versus how much energy we're producing, you know, right now. Um, you know, so I wonder what does the future look like for spending into NVIDIA? Are we just going to, there's just so much money in here that we're going to keep pouring it into these large AI booms. Uh, the AI obviously is something that will be pretty fantastic going forward, but I, I don't think, you know, we're there yet in any capacity. And so that makes me a little bit nervous in some way. I think also with things like Copilot on some of the new Windows devices, uh, I'm not sure many people... Uh, many common people use that. I, I think it's a great buying point, right? Like, look, get the AI built in the computer, but for what purpose, right? And, and do people know how uh, to, to, to properly get everything uh, that they can out of that local AI? Um, and I don't think they do. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting to see. It'll be cool seeing what, you know, Apple does with Meta, of course, they're going to get together and try to work on something with AI as well. And that'll be kind of neat. And that's honestly smart for them because AI, Apple should not be investing a bunch of money into AI. And, you know, Meta's in a weird spot too where their AI is not fantastic. And I honestly hate it uh, for Instagram. I, I can't find anything that I want anymore. Um, so anyways, it's kind of interesting. Google's obviously was pretty bad as well with that major rollout. And so regardless, NVIDIA is up 6% right now. And uh, we'll see how that shakes out going forward. But I still think that's pretty indicative. Um, I mean, yeah, their quarterlies were very good as well. You know, I mean, there's nothing like horrible in it. Um, but again, that's a market cap of $3 trillion. You know, and do we run into a period at some point uh, between this, like, massive rollout and hype and actual adoption and um, good functionality um, in enterprise with AI? And I think there might be a period where that is the case. And we'll see what happens. Maybe some capital will get evaporated in that, and you know you can decrease the amount of liquidity. Uh, let's take a look at Rivian. <laughs> Whoa, it's not up this much. Yeah, trading up forty-eight percent right now. So massive cash injection from Volkswagen, five billion dollars. They're going to work on software together for their cars. Let's take a look at this. Volkswagen Group plans to invest up to five billion in electric vehicle startup Rivian. Starting with an initial investment of $1 billion, the additional $4 billion is expected by 2026. It includes plans for $1 billion each in 2025 and 2026, followed by $2 billion in 2026, uh, related to an expected joint venture to create electrical architecture and software technology. Shares of the Rivian sword, obviously, yeah, we're up 48% right now during After Hours Trading Tuesday, two days ahead of the investor event for Rivian, which has been under pressure from Wall Street due to its cash burn and significant losses. You don't want to be a cash-burning tech company, I think, right now. Uh, Tuesday at 11.96, share roughly down. Yeah, I mean, look, we're at 16.37. This is pretty crazy. So the initial $1 billion from Volkswagen will be in the form of a convertible note, which could be converted to Rivian shares 
on or after December 1st. The release said uh, the deal will help Rivian on its journey to become a cash flow positive. Interesting. He noted that the capital is expected to carry the company through the production ramp up of its smaller R2 SUVs, which I believe will be a bit more uh, affordable, which will be awesome. And it is honestly one of the big you know, barriers to entry for a lot of people, uh, especially for Rivian EVs. Uh, he noted that the capital is expected to carry the company through the production ramp up. This is a quote from him. We believe the opportunity ahead is significant. Yeah, he's the CEO. Of course, he's going to say that. Volkswagen is expected to use Rivian's electrical architecture and software stack for vehicles beginning the second half of the decade, according to Scarage. So the question is, how does Volkswagen think that they get ahead of Rivian on this? And that's the cool question, kind of thinking about what they want to do here. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Ketchstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the Morning Market Kickoff. We are... Right smack at the open. Let's take a look at where we are going. Let's go to the Dow Jones. What does that not work on here? Good. I don't know what the, I don't know why that ticker isn't working, but we can look at the Nasdaq at least. Oh, it's Dan. Yeah, of course. Let's take a look. 
Here we are, K, okay, the Dow Jones Industrial, trading off about 0.28% today, um, and those futures are off about 0.34%. We can go to the comp real quick. I'm going to add these to my hot list. Uh, off about 0.12%, and then those futures are off about 022 and then the Russell futures off about 0.73%, and uh, the E-mini off about 028 as well. Uh, the SPY is up right now, at least about 0.13%. Meta trading big, up about 1.52%. Google as well. Check the gold contact, contract. We are heading uh, back down below that 2300 level. Uh, of course, we didn't shoot off until right about here, about the 2000 level. Uh, so still quite above that big run up. But I think, you know, it's, yeah, we have a high dollar. Okay, that's once 107 area. Okay, we just cracked 105, or excuse me, 106, or 106, almost 10 right now. And I believe that's going to continue to move up as well. And the metals will pay for that in some capacity. Silver moving uh, quite a bit to the downside, off about 0.28%, almost off about 0.3% today. Trading at 2898. And then copper doing, you know, basically nothing except sideways to the down uh, for the past few days at least. Obviously, had a big move down side here uh trading up or excuse me off about 1.69 percent uh we were talking about nvidia before went to the break and you know anyways i have nothing else to say about that but i thought it was kind of interesting still trading at about a three trillion market cap uh which is pretty impressive for that company um and, and we'll see if 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 the cash flow into that uh, can sustain it Again, it doesn't seem like any of these financial pressures, excuse me, uh, you know, like the monetary tightening or anything is, is affecting money being put into the market. Okay, I, I think this is a super interesting thing. You had Janet Yellen uh, come out and talk about how she thinks inflation will go down and she doesn't see anything wrong at the grocery store. A little bit out of touch. Same thing going on at the Fed meeting maybe like two Wednesdays ago, uh, where again, you had this question from a reporter who actually gave his input on something, which is, you know, McDonald's having a $5 burger uh, meal and how that is indicative of inflation pressure subsiding, which it's not. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I, 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 again, I, I think what the Fed can do is, again, only demand side. And I, I think it affects people who don't have a lot of liquidity. And uh, I think it's still there. I, I think we still have these pressures there. I don't see where we have any kind of you know, easing going on. Anyways, I don't know. Kind of just talking with that. Let's take a look at FedEx as well. Give me one second to pull this up. All right. It's up about 11.79%. Good Lord. So shares soared after the company reported results that topped analysts' estimates in both earnings and revenue. Uh, here's how the company did in the fiscal fourth quarter. Earnings per share at $5.41 adjusted versus five thirty-five dollars expected. And then revenue of about $22, uh, not up, but at $22.11 billion versus $22.07 billion. Pretty nice. Uh, the company reported net income for the three-month period that ended uh, May 31st of $1.47 billion or five ninety-four dollars a share compared to $1.54 billion or six oh five. dollars uh, per share a year earlier, revenue rose to 22.1 billion, up slightly from 21.9 billion a year earlier. For the full fiscal year, revenue was 87.7 billion, uh, down from 90.2 billion. Reported the capital spending for fiscal 2024 was 5.2 billion, which is down 16 percent from 6.2 billion uh, in the fiscal 2023, and uh, less than the 5.7 billion it forecasted in its fiscal 2024 guidance. Pretty good. Fiscal 2025, the company said it expects low to mid single digit revenue growth year over year, driven in large part by e commerce and low inventory levels. So, this is a quote here from the uh, chief customer officer. We think e commerce is going to outpace business to business growth. Okay. Uh, we like the fundamentals from e commerce perspective that will help us here in the United States. Yeah, definitely. That's huge for them. Some good news for them going forward. Now, let's talk. I just want to go back to AI a little bit uh, with YouTube. First things first, I think that the market isn't understanding what YouTube is. Okay, I, every young person uses YouTube. 
I don't watch Netflix. I know a lot of people you do not watch Netflix until my age group, but YouTube is massive, right? And uh, it is dominating the streaming sector, I mean, and, and no doubt. So YouTube made up nearly 10% of all viewership on connected and traditional TVs, like TVs, not phones or laptops or anything like that, but actual TVs. That's in the US in May. This is pretty nuts. Uh, media companies such as Netflix, Disney, and Warner Bros. Uh, Discovery uh, don't have a uniform strategy. And they call it a threat in this, but it's it's not, I don't think. And I think it's a little bit different, right? We, we can look through this. There's, there's, no, there's no narrative on YouTube. I mean, maybe people could argue that, you know, in some capacity with, with censorship or whatever. But in functionality right now, there's no real uh, narrative-driven thing behind YouTube. It's all creator-led. There is nothing they tried to do this. There's nothing being made for YouTube uh, that is solely for YouTube, right? They, they tried to do this a little while ago, and it just didn't pan out very well for them. Uh, which is, this is a different thing than like Netflix. On, on YouTube, y you know, you get to stream some movies, uh, but they're usually very old, uh, which I don't think in a way competes with like Netflix or Disney Plus or anything like that. Um, and, and they're not getting any, you know, new TV shows on there. I, again, I think this has been tried a few times and it hasn't worked out for them. So what I would suggest for some of these main streaming companies is some stuff that's not very popular on their platform, but they have the licensing or at least the streaming rights to it. Maybe, you know, lend that out to YouTube. I don't know. Um, but regardless, it's massive. And so then let's move over to this. YouTube is seeking record deal labels uh, for new AI music tools. Interesting. So YouTube is in talks with record labels to license their songs for artificial intelligence tools that clone popular artists' mu uh, artists music uh, hoping to win over a skeptical industry with upfront payments. So the Google-owned video site needs labels uh, needs labels content to legally train AI song generators as it prepares to launch new tools this year. According to three people familiar with the matter, the company has recently offered lump sums of cash to major labels and tried to convince more artists to allow their music to be used in training AI software, according to several people briefed on the talks. However, many artists remain, remain fiercely opposed to AI music generation fearing it could undermine the value of their work. Any move by a label to force their stars into such a scheme would be hugely controversial. Okay. It's interesting because there is this conversation of threat around AI creating art, right? At least for the visual arts or something like Dolly, what's really unique to note about them is that they're not very good at creating like diverse portfolios of art, right? So they just do the same thing over and over again. Okay, another interesting concept for art, they might do this with music as well, where there's not taking any creative risk. Now, imagine that it gets trained on its own kind of stuff and uh, how uncreative that would be. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the morning market kickoff. Uh, take a look over the screen here. We are at TFNN.com. We are on the homepage. Come give it a checkout. But I want you to focus your attention over to the newsletters tab. You scroll down to here. We have the Tiger 4X report that is with Teddy Kekstat. Now, if you want to learn what's going on in Forex, how to trade Forex, if you are in Forex and you just want some fantastic analysis, that is definitely going to help you uh, in your trading day. This is the newsletter for you. You're going to go ahead and click subscribe, and you're going to select whichever plan works best for you. Well, do the $97 one here, and then we're going to go to services as well. Maybe you don't want to do the newsletter right now. That's fine. We do have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So just keep that in mind if it's your first time subscribing. However, if you're over to services, uh, we also have two fantastic uh, live stream webinars with Teddy Kexat. This is Capitalize on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spreads. Definitely worth watching. And then if you really just want to get into reading candlestick patterns, well, this is the authority on it. You've got to come check this out. We are joined right now with Teddy Kexat of the Tiger Forex Report. Teddy, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. we got some good stuff to talk about today. <clears throat> we absolutely do. So, you know, first things first, I don't know if you have anything you want to bring up, but, you know, we have the dollar moving up almost reversing to that 107 area. And then of course, things going on with the Bank of Japan and interest rates. I wanna see what you have to talk about today as well. Uh, well, I think right off the bat, <clears throat> we should start off with the dollar index, which is breaking out to new move highs today. Oh yeah. You know, um, I with the Tiger Forex support, you know, right off the bat, I was bullish going into the week. Yes. Now, Monday, the dollar index took one on the chin, started to stumble, but it didn't tumble and it bounced yesterday and now it's making new move highs. And I think that this uh, bull is for real. You know, um, I think that our upside target area of 105, 993, something like that, we should hit, you know, probably not, it's not going to happen today, but I would think over the next couple of sessions, the only thing that could possibly throw things off would be um, tomorrow's unemployment claims. If they were to come out, let's say, um, <clears throat> Uh, drastically higher, yep. you know, um, in that case, I would say the dollar index would probably take a little bit of a pullback um, just because odds are that yields would retract off of that, you know. <clears throat> um, now, if that was to occur, that would be a, a one day kind of influence. So I wouldn't say that it's going to disrupt the trend wholeheartedly, you know, but that would be on an sure. intraday basis, something that could be a speed bump that would help. Um, Pull, have a pullback situation, which I would say that's a buy break kind of scenario. Um, there's a lot of fundamentals that are driving things. Now, um, before we get into the end, there's some real dynamics there um, besides technically what's going on. But um, the dollar index itself is, you know, mostly driven by the euro and the pound, which is pretty much what's driving this. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of currencies that are gone sideways. 
Um, yes, there is dollar strength in the Swiss, the yen, and other things like that. And I think that when it comes to those, you have to start to look at there's divergence and there's fundamental factors that now are driving um, short-term trends in these major currency pairs versus the dollar. Okay, so <clears throat> let's kind of wrap, start with the with the with the U.S. dollar yen. Um, a central bank or the Bank of Japan aside, uh, the biggest thing that happened was uh, a week ago when, or a week and a half ago, is when the Saudis decided to no longer deal only in petrodollars, which is U.S. dollars on sale of oil. Yep. So that mean, that's a huge, huge, huge difference um, because one of the currencies now, the Japanese are not part of BRICS. Because of this move, um, they may be our allies, but because of our policies here and our destruction of our energy resources, if you will, we're not a reliant partner for them as far as supplying oil, which we are one of their biggest suppliers. And the fact that they will be able to purchase not only in their own currency, but other currencies gives a dynamic, which means that they'll be able to save money on oil by not buying from us, period, uh -huh. at all. You know, um, now are they going to now here's another dynamic of that is that the petrodollar, you know, people say, oh, well, let's get off oil and we don't have to worry about the petrodollar. But it's a it's a tremendous marketplace and a country like Japan that it doesn't have oil and has to import oil. It's a big deal. Um, right. Currencies, you know, I mean, there there's some people that want to have one world currency and think that's a great idea. Well, that's not a fact. It's not happening anytime soon. Um, and the rest of the world totally does not want that. And countries like Japan, you know, they have to deal with what they with they have to do what they have to do. And um, we may be an ally militarily, but economically, um, we are no longer a friend to them. We're a threat to them. And I think that as they get off the petrodollar, the biggest threat we have now is that the Fed can't cut rates. If they cut rates, um, for sure the Japanese, and they may already <clears throat> start to have a plan to unwind, their they're not going to buy our treasury bonds anymore, and they're going to start selling them. And if that does occur, um, we, we are in a catch-22 situation because the Fed can't cut rates. That's for sure. Right. Um, in fact, if anything, they have to raise rates. Um, and I mean raise rates significantly. Well, we could see rates escalate. If you think that what they did in the last year and a half before they paused was an aggressive move, um, that's nothing compared to what they're going to have to do. You're going to see you're going to see the discount rate go to like eight percent, you know, easily, easily, just to keep the dollar from it's already crashing as far as value, you know. Um, so and and to keep that off the skids, that's probably the forecast. If people think they're gonna cut rates, ain't happening. It's impossible. Yeah. Not with the rest, it's just not, it's just a fundamental, I mean, I'm not trying to be negative on America, but that's not exactly what I'm doing at all. Um, we made these decisions, you know, we set the stage, and guess what? <laughs> Now we got to deal with yep. it, you know, and it's, you know, and this is not being political. I'm not taking a side. I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong. It doesn't matter. We're in a situation now that our hands are tied. It's just a fact, you know, so we have to see what our allies do and how much they want to not hurt because no matter what, they're going to hurt us no matter what they do. You know, there's there's no easy thing for them either. This is not something like we're like, oh, please play nice. Don't kick sand in the sandbox. They're not kicking sand at us. We're the ones who cause these these issues, right. you know. So and uh, they're much smaller than us. So what are they going to be like? Oh, the big bully wants us to back off, back off from what? They're not attacking us, you know. Yeah. So and, and that dynamic is going to give volatility and trends. You know, remember, I've been talking with you and Tommy for the past couple of months about we're in a sideways situation we will be for months you yes. know which is not normal for currencies there's already a divergence in yields versus the dollar already you know i mean if you look at the 10 year and the 30 year treasury bond market they've been basically in a two handle range for yeah. the past 
you know, month, you know, now when that happens and, and no matter what the numbers have popped out, it, ha it, you, it, it will make them go from the lows to the highs. And you know, it's just been a range trade without that moving. We've had no significant trending action in most of the currencies. You know, I mean, the euro has been in a wide range trade now for over a year. You know, the pound has had some nice swings, um, but that's because it's always a little more volatile than the euro. The yen obviously have has, has had some significant volatility. I mean, what happened a month and a half ago was absurd. Hurt, you know, and that was off of next to no at market action or fundamentals, you know. Teddy, so, stay right but, there with us after the break. I want you to still be on. Folks, we'll okay. be right back with Teddy Kexat. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. We are with Teddy Kekstad of the Tiger Fork Support. Teddy, we only have a short segment, but I wanted to hear your closing thoughts on that because I thought that was really interesting. It has a pretty firm basis in it. And then if we have time, take a look at crude oil because you called that exactly right. It got right down, right, below, uh, right above that 72 level, and then we traversed back to the upside, which was a pretty stellar call. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about crude. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, we've been hovering right above the upside breakout level, about a buck for the past week. And today we're hanging on it right now. And it's right at the 80, 62 cent level. Um, I think that if we can get a close down around 80 bucks to $79, 
we could be set up for a nice range trade. And I've been saying that we're our, for the next couple of months, most likely between 75 to 80 bucks is going to be where we're going to chop around. I can't see it sustaining much above 80 in the in for any long term period right now. Um, short term, yes, like it has for the past week, it's been hovering between 80 and 82 bucks, but it's been hanging off of its lows more than its highs, you know. So, um, which that's also had an influence on the yen and a couple other things, you sure. know. Um, and but I think that, uh, you know, I, I was talking to Tommy about this before. Like, am I bullish oil? Yeah. Am I overly bullish? No. Am mm -hmm. I thinking that we're going to rock it up to 90, 100 bucks? Not really. That there's no fundamental or technical reason why we should. Uh, I think we'll be flirting with the highs. I think it's in a buy break situation, but I would look to buy it around 75 down to 72 bucks versus trying to buy it anywhere between 79 and 77 because you're, you're going to just be chopping around and then maybe you get to 78, 80 again for a spike. And if you don't take a profit, you're back right where you started from, you know. Totally. So, um, and that's where I, I, I just think it's going to be in a range. So that's good. Um, uh, prices at the pump here have gone up, you know, they're up almost oh, yeah. 80 cents in the past week, uh, which is kind of crazy because they're higher than they were literally three three months ago when oil was much higher than it is now. Uh, so whatever, it is what it is. You know how that goes. You know, But when it went down to 72 bucks, it was basically where it was at now. Gas never dropped really in price. And then Teddy, just raised the gas tax, so whatever. Thank you so much for joining us. It's awesome every time you're on. Folks, again, check out the Tiger Forex Report by Teddy Kekstad, and then go to the Services tab. Check out his webinars. Teddy, thank you so much. Folks, Thanks, I hope Jacob. you all have a great rest of your day.